Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. I'm your host, Alex. Today's proof of life is Thursday, September 29, 2022. And um, yeah, just coming to you with uh, with another free episode, a free consultation, essentially. Uh, in this one here, not so much giving out advice as much as uh, providing an opinion, right? A professional opinion. A corporate cowboy's opinion. And it's coming from Reddit. This one is coming from r slash career advice. It was posted a couple days ago, 18 days ago, it says. And the original poster here is, is asking a question, but not so much asking for advice as they are just asking for input from the career advice community at large, from from those that visit off of Reddit. Essentially, they're asking, does anyone, does anyone else, he's asking, does anyone else ever feel guilty about how cushy their job is? And it starts, so I've got a really nice job. And in parentheses, they're in clinical trials, data at manager. And it pays well. It's about $100,000 a year. It's fully remote. And I only actually have to work maybe eight hours per week. That's all it takes me to get my stuff done. And that's all anyone cares about. On top of all that, my particular position is constantly in high demand. So even if I had to switch companies, it wouldn't be hard to find a similarly cushy job. It is easy. And that's an italics. Easy. <laughs> I don't feel bad because I feel like I should be doing more for my employer or anything. Hold on. Because I, I don't feel, it says here, I, because I feel like I should be doing more for my employer or anything. No, no, no. I don't feel bad because I feel like, oh, okay, I get it. I don't feel bad because I feel like I should be doing more for my employer or anything. Maybe that's misworded. Maybe that needs a double negative. They're happy, it says. They're happy with my work. And I know that if they felt like they could, they'd work me till I collapsed. Yeah, fucking, that's corporate. Most, most jobs. There are some managers out there that are in a a leadership capacity and wanting to form, uh, wanting to form groups, wanting to coordinate, you know, a team even within corporate. So they might look out for your better interests as, as a human, as a professional, right? They don't all stick to the, uh, to the status quo. They don't, they don't all stick to the cultural, the cultural norm to the shitty cultural norm of working someone till they collapse. You know, they might, they might throw you a bone every now and then they might give you a little bonus, a little heads up, a little extra, training cross training provide you added opportunity to advance and develop right why because as much as they're helping you they're also helping themselves keeping you in their circle keeping you in their network i mean that's what a real leader does it says here so i feel like it's pretty fair game to put in the minimal effort it takes me to get done what they hired me to do But, it says here, I do feel bad because I feel like there are so many people that deserve this job more than I do. Personally, I I probably wouldn't feel that way. I feel like if you qualify for the job and you get the job done, then, I mean, it's up to you what you do with the other 32 hours, if this job is full-time, with the other 32 hours a week that you have essentially to think and act for yourself, even while you are technically on the clock or salary, right? Like, I don't feel like I worked that hard for it. I went to college for free because of a family member's job, not because I earned it. I got a degree in math and statistics because I like that stuff. I spent a few years at a shitty, abusive company and then bam, I find myself in a position where I hardly have to work at all. 
I can't even say that my technical math slash stats background is why only people like myself can do the job because I'm pretty sure I could train just about any moderately intelligent person to do it just as well. It's really not that hard and it doesn't require much or any math slash stats knowledge. With so many people struggling day to day, being underpaid and overworked, most of whom could easily do my job as well or better, it just kind of feels bad that I have to do what I, wait, that I have, that I have what I do, that I have what I do, what? Hold up. With so many people struggling day to day, being underpaid and overworked, most of whom could easily do my job as well or better, it just kind of feels bad that I have what I do despite very little real effort or suffering on my part. Am I just crazy? Or do other people ever feel this way? Personally, if you ever find yourself in that position, right? If your job gets too easy, man, it's time to start planning moves. It's time to start plotting. It's time to start scheming to get ahead. Scheme in the righteous sense of the word, you know, with, with good, with positive connotations attached to it. If your job feels too easy, if you're really only dedicating eight hours of it a week, you have... Essentially, if you are full-time, right, if they are, uh, I don't know, paying you hourly or even salary because most salaries are contingent to working 40 hours a week plus potentially some mandatory overtime, right, to to satisfy your job duties, your position duties. 32 hours a week to essentially work for yourself create, I don't know, another stream of income, something significant, something viable, something that could later relieve you from your own job. You won't even have to show up to work. You could just continue growing that stream of of revenue, that stream of income, turn it from, I don't know, some kind of side hobby to something you actually enjoy doing. Right. And while you claim here, while you claim here, you enjoy math and statistics. What what's what's wrong with having a cushy job that does imply that does employ. It applies the math and statistics knowledge that you learned. Right. Even though you claim that um, you could teach it to just about anybody who's moderately intelligent. That might not necessarily be the case. It's because math and stats comes easy to you. Well, there are other fields also that could use math and stats. There are other applications for it. There might be applications you don't even see for it, right? I feel like at this point in time, short of of going to a shrink, I might advise you actually visit a career consultant, a corporate cowboy if you will. And you can find us online on Instagram. That's the corporate cowboys with a Z on Patreon. It's the corporate cowboys podcast. You can reach out to us, email us. You can send us some snail mail. If you want to be even more discreet, what you write, right? doesn't have to get scanned or filtered or whatever happens via email. Get a little, maybe what, like another degree of security, right? And that's P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California, 95741. And that's good. You could write to us, become a pen pal, if you will, until, you know, traffic gets overwhelming and and responses become longer and longer. I mean, if you start paying, we could we could program some kind of scheduled time to meet either digitally or, you know, some kind of virtual conference, a phone call, some kind of correspondence even officially via letters. 
you know, something that'll get you exclusive access, exclusive consultation for just you yourself to focus on on your career and work through that feeling of of feeling <laughs> feeling incapable, feeling less capable, feeling n- not inept, feeling uh, undeserving. Nah, man. We all essentially deserve the positions that we're in. And in some instances, it's not even by any choice, decision, or action that we take. <laughs> it's just where the chips have landed. It's just where fate has put us. Doesn't mean that we have to stay put, though, does it? So, even though you have a cushy job, a job that should 100 k a year, I know folks that would kill for doesn't mean that you have to sit still and soak up that 100k when you personally know you could do it moving and and admit that some others deserve it more than you do that's a feeling you're getting and you by by expressing it by putting it out there are essentially admitting to it that you could be doing more that you could be doing better and it might not even be about 100k. It might not be, it might not be about 150k, 200,000, 300, a million dollars a year. It might not be about that. It might be the satisfaction that you take away from working, from putting in the work, continuous development of yourself as a person, as a human most importantly as a professional now that's a tough conversation to have it is it is why because a lot of it is going to hinge on your current position in life and it's cushy and you know it and you admit it well what are you doing with that hundred thousand dollars a year right now we open a can of worms where is that 100K going? Are you putting it to work? Have you started a hobby that is worthwhile, that is rewarding, that is profitable even? Right? Those are all questions to ask. They're reasonable questions. But if the answer that you formulate in your mind comes from a defensive position, like you have to defend what you do with your 100K, then... <laughs> 100K isn't going to keep you happy. Your cushy job isn't going to keep you happy. You have to worry about how it is you develop yourself around your job. Don't let your job define you. And and it's it's amusing. It's amusing how the original poster here is self-aware self-aware that their job being cushy somewhat identifies them and they also somewhat identify with the job they identify as not fitting they misidentify with it slowly but surely they are not identifying with it At the end, yeah, they rationalize a little bit and say, well, you know, they got the degree and they spent their time. They they made their bones, earned their stripes in, in, in an abusive and shitty company, and then bam, they hit the big leagues. And that happens to a lot of people. I, you know, I could say it's a rite of passage, though I don't think it should be. I feel like every position, any, any and every position that a person works in their life, should be constructive, should be a positive experience, should be a progressive, should be progressive advancement, should be continual, continual learning, continual advancement. So as folks are ready to rotate out and learn something new, do something better, earn more money, have more responsibility as they become ready to to move on, then they're able to leave that space to someone else who also deserves that space they're just vacating. 
that space that they are no longer in. They also, everybody deserves to, to progress and get ahead. Folks seeking to become continent professionals to, to really cement an identity as a professional. That's what they're about. They're about improvement. They're about involvement and participation. Now, this post doesn't really go into too much detail about what the organizational structure is like, right? What the span of control is between them and a supervisor. What, what the channels of communication look like. Chains of command and whatnot. So I can't give too much of an opinion as far as moves to make as a corporate cowboy. Cloak and dagger and skullduggery and that sort. But, but, I do resonate. I do resonate with this post in the sense that I would like a cushy job. I would like to at least attain a cushy job. Sure, it depends on how one defines a cushy job. If you are literally doing nothing for money, then you have nothing to worry about. You can do something else for yourself while you earn this money. And that's what I alluded to in the very beginning. If you're only working eight hours a week, you have 32 to yourself to continue working, doing something else for yourself. I'm not sure where this podcast might take me. It might put me in another strata in another sphere of influence, another tax bracket, another world. And while I'm hopeful that anyone who comes across it sees the commitment, the dedication, sees the message, understands it, can read between the lines of what it is I'm trying to insert into the universe, into the corporate space, into the professional ether, that they're able to grab hold of the parts of it that work, the parts in it that they also resonate with, and leave the rest to Alex, right? You see, I can resonate. I can resonate with the fact, you know, having gone to school, having worked for some cutthroat companies, made my stripes as well. And I don't know if you detected that connection when I was reading through it, but I feel like my voice even changed a little bit. It was only one or two sentences long, but for a moment there, there was a connection. There was a connection. Now, as far as cushy jobs go, I don't connect to that so much anymore. Currently, I'm in a state of hustle. <laughs> Somebody once, uh, once quoted me, not quoted me, but had a saying, I guess, had a saying that the hustle is forever. So that the struggle is short term. The, we struggle for the short term, so the hustle is for the long run. Hustle for the long run. Struggle be short term to hustle for the long run. <laughs> it feels good to hustle. I'm not going to lie. It feels good to hustle. It feels good to put in work. It feels good to pull strings and actuate levers. It feels good to make things happen in the real world. Struggle. I get it, man. I get it. It's just another hurdle to get over. It's an obstacle in life to get around or get under or get through, really confront, address in a professional manner, as professional as we can manage. But it's that struggle that causes us to grow, causes us to change and adapt to the environment that we find ourselves in. And this person, the original poster, apparently doesn't have that struggle, doesn't face that struggle at work. To them, I mean, the job is cushy. They're making 100 Gs a year. Easy. 
clocking it, working only eight hours a week. For some, you know, that's an envious position to be in. It's an enviable, enviable, I'm sorry, an enviable position to be in, a covetable position to be in. (laughs) And for others, nah, they might be making more and working even less. And still they struggle, right? But it's a matter of having love for the journey. It's a matter of having love for the work, getting intimate with it, really appreciating the steps that it takes to move from the struggle category, right, where you're just barely finding your footing, to the hustle category where you're actually making things happen. Where slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And you're just in a state of flow. Constant flow. This person is stuck. They don't see it. They don't express that. They don't write that. Hey guys, I'm stuck. Does anybody ever else... Does anyone else ever feel like they're stuck in a cushy job? No. Because it's a cushy job. It, it comes with a sense of marshmallow Why would you be stuck on a marshmallow? This is a cushy job. Why would you even talk down on it? Why would you knock it if you haven't tried it? And if, and if you've tried it, then you aren't knocking it. You know, that line of logic. But they recognize... They recognize that they either ought to be doing more or that they shouldn't be doing it at all. (laughs) That someone else deserves it. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, this person is at a crossroads. Is at a fork in their path. And if they're hearing this, if they can, if they come across this ever, really my advice is to make a choice. Make a choice. Take a step back. Analyze the position you find yourself in within the organization, in this industry, in this field, amongst competitors. Really, really assess and take account of what's available to you in terms of resources, opportunities, And put something together. Put something on paper. If you need help, reach out. We're available. And it's what we specialize in. Motherfucking corporate cowboys. (laughs) Let's read a comment or two. And find what other folks are saying, really. Because this is uh, a special position to find yourself in, to find oneself in, is a good place and at the same time a stale place, just a still place, settling and unsettling at the same time. The first commenter here says, if you feel this way, then share the wealth, man. (laughs) What the fuck? Hold up. They say, if you feel this way, then share the wealth, man. Give back a little. There's charities and food banks where even $100 would go super far. Your heart's in the right place. Life is unfair sometimes, so why not give back? Funny enough, is that, I mean, I I didn't say, yo, shoot me some of those. So shoot me some dough, right? You know, shoot me a couple dollars. I mean, the corporate cowboys can do without, right? If they left the grid completely, I mean, we'd be fucking unstoppable. We'd be monsters. But we are working between certain lines, learning to color within the lines. But color in a way that provides the illusion of compliance. That provides a certain view, a certain frame a perspective into a world that not many people actually navigate. 
Sure, many are employed by it. They go to work, show up for the check, nine to five, maybe weekends. But they never, they might never take a step back and evaluate what it is they're really playing in. It's a sandbox and a half. It's a playground and then some. And the original poster actually comments says, I try to as much as I can. Somehow I still find myself without much extra income as my girlfriend is currently unemployed and has a lot of medical expenses. When I've got extra though, I usually donate to a few causes that I like. Yeah, this motherfucker shouldn't be bitching about a cushy job. (laughs) If they barely have a couple dollars left over. I mean, somehow it says, somehow I still find myself without much extra income, right? So they've got another mouth to feed. They've got someone else to support. They have a dependent, you know, for tax purposes. They have a dependent, their girlfriend. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. What I am saying, though, is that 100K, given their life circumstances, given their position, is not cushy, is not cushy. They have 32 hours a week, a week to think about how to improve their position in life, right? They could knock out the work in eight hours. That's the first day, right? In a five-day work week, the first day, done. You got four days to yourself to think, well, what else does this organization need? How can I change the system? How could I change the methodology in which clinical trial data is managed? How can I do it for the industry? How can I position myself, leverage the position I'm in currently to be more attractive to competitors, to be attractive to other organizations as an independent contractor, a consultant in some capacity, right? Because 100K, 100K, yeah, I mean, I'll admit, it's a lot for one person, for one person without a lot of baggage. But you, my friend, male or female, I don't give a fuck. 100K ain't shit. Ain't shit. You know what you do have a lot of, though? is fucking time. (laughs) And if you need help organizing it, if you need help filling your agenda with ideas, small pet projects, miniature experiments, and social research of your own, maybe even market research, because you might need it if you want to go where I think you ought to go. Again, just an opinion. If you want to hear it, I have to get paid out too. Maybe maybe you can shoot me a couple of dollars out that hundred racks. <laughs> oh, shit. The next commenter says, teach me, Obi-Wan. I am moderately intelligent. And I'm going to skip that. Are they hiring? I would love this job and am qualified for it. Don't feel guilty, by the way, they say. Life is meant to be lived, not grinded through. I'm going to, you know, both ad- both agree and disagree with that. I'm going to agree not to feel guilty and then disagree that life is not meant to be grinded through. Nah, man. Look at the uh look at some of the retirees out here. Some of the individuals who are already retired. They don't fucking deserve to to retire either. They still have some some capacity, either physical or or mental. And what do they do for half their career? Maybe maybe most of it. Perhaps all of it. Sit Sit and manage, just be a middle manager, just reporting numbers, not really leading, just managing, just being a boss, taking orders, giving orders, being another cog, just a just a link in the chain, not really doing shit. Yeah, yeah, I get it. You're going to come back with, well, well, they have families, they got mouths to feed, they got people to, to consider. They don't want to rock the boat. Been there. Rocking the boat. Trying to force other motherfuckers' hand to have them move and have them get ahead to make space for myself. 
obviously, right? Because if I help them, I'm helping myself. If they fucking vacate the spot, if they chose not to settle for 100K, then they might have done it moving. They might have bumped up the next person also so that I might sit at the table with 100K to eat on. But, uh, you know, you live a little, you learn a little, and you burn some. (laughs) Uh, Somebody says, off topic, but what education experience do you need for this job? Any advice? I don't know. A lot of these, uh, a lot of these comments seem to be oriented towards humor and entertainment, which is why I do come to career advice, right? To r slash career advice because I recognize that a lot of the advice that's given on here isn't even advice. It's just fucking retorts and fucking comments and and fucking uh, uh, what's the term I'm I'm, I'm looking for? <sighs> riffs? Not even riffs, really. It's this is folks coming through to falsely commiserate in a sense we're like uh don't feel don't feel like uh like it's all bad throw throw me some money <laughs> somebody and then somebody says and they're always asking like oh what, are they hiring job and experience nah man i mean you have to be comfortable and you have to be comfortable in your position in life right and that might not even be something that you could just comment Why don't you direct message them instead of going after the virtual signal points, instead of clout chasing in the comment section? Fucking hit this motherfucker up. Why don't you network with them? Why don't you plug them into something? Why don't you let them teach you, right, how to manage clinical trial data if that is what you're looking for? But, I mean, advertising it in the comment section, are they hiring? Uh, What education and experience? Even though they listed that already in in the main post. Well... They respond to that one. Well, they say, the original poster says, I have a bachelor's of science in mathematics and statistics, but degrees and experience vary broadly among my coworkers. I know clinical DMs with, uh, I'm assuming data managers, I know clinical data managers with humanities degrees that perform excellently. Humanities being like social sciences and whatnot. More than anything, if you can make your resume, if you can make your resume make you look like you're technically skilled-ish and interested in clinical trials research and interview in such a way that you emphasize your ability to ask and answer, what if X happened? How can I prepare for the unexpected? You got a decent chance of getting a job as a data manager. It may not be as cushy as mine currently is because you'll have a lot to learn, but once you learn it, it's easy. If you're coming from a field slash experience way outside of clinical trials slash science slash statistics, you'll probably have to start off as a data coordinator. They still get paid decently, but do most of the work and can quickly progress to data manager. If you're a critical thinker that's comfortable asking, What could X lead to? You can probably make it as a data manager working as little as I do. So our math and stats guy here is actually in the comment section giving career advice. Imagine that. (laughs) And that's, I think, I think that's fucking perfect. Perfect. That's, it comes full circle here where this person obviously is has leadership qualities, has leadership qualities, and yet doubts themselves. I think we all face that from time to time. That's more of an internal struggle. And now, having the tenacity to hustle, to to not settle on feeling undeserving, to not settle on a job that's just cushy, and you just getting by because of this connotation that it's cushy, right? A dollar says that they go out with friends and their friends don't make the money. And uh, and our math and stats guy here has a has a better time, has is better able to enjoy themselves, is better able to enjoy the outing. And so their friends might have told them, "Well, you have such a cushy job, right?" And a fucking whiny crying mode and if Matt's and stats guy here was 
was as bright as this comment, then they might be putting their friends on to the game, right? Well, fucking break down one time, yo. Even It says even humanities degree, so you can take that gender studies degree and fucking plug away with some time, become a data coordinator first, make your bones, earn your stripes, right? And become a data manager if you want as cushy a job as they do. <laughs> Well, I'll leave it to our math and stats guy here to really assess themselves, really evaluate themselves internally and find whether or not what it is they think they do deserve, they are capable of attaining. Because if they haven't even started there, right, with all that free time they got, if they haven't started to plot and plan on something better, on something that they feel they do deserve and could just work toward, right? could renew their struggle could renew could could reinitiate the hustle then they might get ahead if not they're going to be stuck at a dead end cushy job <laughs> have a good one folks I'm going to leave you all here if you want to shoot us a donation by all means you can shoot us a couple of dollars it keeps this operation nonprofit. It goes towards business fees and uh, legal fees, business costs, business expenses, and legal fees. There's a PayPal, a Venmo floating around out there. You're a smart cookie. You can find it. Have a nice weekend. <laughs>